All right, guys, today I'm showing you our new 5.5 gallon vacuum drying chamber. So this is the kit that you'll get when you order it on our website, visionminer.com slash dry kit. And uh, yeah, we had to upgrade our old system so that we could fit mostly the big 2.5 and bigger spools. So this is designed specifically to be able to fit the width of most industrially sized spools, which a lot of high temp filaments come on and everything like that. So let's go into the kit. When you get it, you will open it up and you'll get a couple different things in the kit right off the bat. So firstly, obviously some vacuum pump oil. Now this is high quality oil that we source specifically for these vacuum pumps. Uh, obviously, next you get the vacuum pump itself and of course the chamber with the lid and the silicone seal. And then you'll also find the hose and the valves. So we're gonna go, that's pretty much it. It's very simple, very self-explanatory. And we're gonna go through real quick. You will also get this instruction sheet with a couple different things and some manuals and everything in it, and some information about drying filament, why that's so important, different ways to dry it. If you wanna learn more about that, we've got a lot of info on our website, again, at visionminer.com slash dry kit. So let's go right into the basic assembly. This takes about two minutes right when you get it. All you're gonna really do is take the acrylic lid out of the box and then the valve assembly here. So all we gotta do is take one bolt right off of this and then take the metal washer and the plastic washer off and then we just fit this right through there and then we put the plastic washer and then the metal washer and then we're gonna tighten this down now, it was a little tricky to get on there the first time. You can basically just get this finger tight, uh, and then when you pull the vacuum, if it's not holding a vacuum, then you can just cinch that down a little bit with a wrench, but pretty much hand tightening does the trick. So there we go, we've assembled our lid, and then the next thing that we need to do is take our vacuum pump, and right here you'll notice a little plastic cap over the vacuum valve and we'll just unscrew that real quick. And then the hose comes with two ends. One side has this little uh, metal thing which you won't really ever have to tighten, but the other side has a brass fitting. So we're just gonna take that, screw that onto the top there. And bada bing, bada boom. Now, all we gotta do is put the lid on, like so, and then you literally just cinch this up against it, and you don't even have to get it on there all the way. When you turn the vacuum pump on, that'll pull a vacuum and you're good to go. Now, when you're operating it, you've got your vacuum pull, and then you've got the air filter on this other side, which will allow you to bring air back into the chamber. So when you're pulling vacuum, you wanna have this side actually closed, and then this side will be open. When it's facing the direction of the valve, that means it's open. So bada bing, bada boom, we pull vacuum, you watch the gauge until it gets to negative 30 on the PSI scale, and you're good to go. You shut it off, you just close the valve, unhook the hose, and then you can shake it around if you wanna agitate it, and then open it back up, or you can store your filament in this, and it works really great for that. Now, one thing you do need to do with this valve before you actually pull vacuum is cutting this little tiny tip off of here that allows a little bit of airflow. Uh, and you'll notice these don't come filled. You can fill it with glycerin or vacuum oil or something else like that. It's not really necessary, but it is something you can do. So there we've got that, both closed. When this is on there and it's under vacuum and you open it back again, you wanna make sure to open up the side with the particle filter. So you'll open it like that it'll fill back up with air and then the lid will release. One of the big requests we got from everybody was to make a bigger chamber to fit these big spools and uh, frankly nothing really existed on the market for that and we had to actually go out and make our own mold to get these chambers made and as you can see it fits in there perfectly with a little bit of room to spare on both and you could probably fit three two and a half kilo spools on here and I can fit anywhere from seven to nine one kilo spools of other types of filament in here at any given time. It's a great way 
if you're printing all day long and then you're going home at night to store your filament that's already dried or maybe you dried it during the day and you want it ready for the next morning, you can store it in the vacuum chamber. Uh, but the way this really works is we take it and we bake our filament. So we'll take this thing, put it in the oven at the appropriate drying temperature for the polymer. All polymers are a little bit different for however many hours. And then when it's hot, specifically, when it's still hot, we'll take it out, put it in the vacuum chamber, pull the pressure, and then shake it around a little bit, leave it there for 30 seconds to a minute, and then release it and it's ready to go. Now you can optionally do that a couple times, but this is really, really good for getting all that excess moisture out of nylon, uh, just for the low temperature stuff. And then of course, Peak and Ultim and PPSU and PSU and all the other high temp filaments that we specialize in, this is really a necessary component. It's one of the best ways we've found to actually dry out filament, dry as a bone so that there's no moisture in your filament when you print. And that's critical to be able to get the full mechanical properties out of the polymers that you're printing with, especially in the high temp world. So we currently sell this on the site as a kit with the pump and the chamber. But if you are interested in just getting a chamber, maybe you've already got a pump uh, and you want a couple extra chambers, hit us up, let us know, and we might make these chambers available by themselves. Other than that, if you uh, need an oven or something like that, uh, food dehydrators work for low temp filaments, generally not for anything over your basic nylon. Uh, you really need 90 Celsius to 110, 130 even up to 150 Celsius to dry a lot of these filaments. All right, so if you got any questions about this or anything, just let us know down in the comments below. Like this video if you enjoy this kind of product overview and uh, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.